This is my computer with a Ryzen 7 5800X. It doesn't have a cooler on it because the cooler died, but I have a cheap Chinese air cooler. It was about $10 from AliExpress. Uh, is that going to be enough for the Ryzen 7 5800X? It is so flimsy. Should I use this? I almost feel like I should be giving it a disclaimer. There actually is a legitimate risk of uh, damaging the CPU, I think, if uh, we continue this test. Oh, should we overclock? Hi there, how you doing? Uh, I'm TechTweeb, thanks for clicking on the video. So yeah, this is my Ryzen 7 5800X computer, and it had this 280 millimeter MSI liquid cooler, AIO liquid cooler on it. But this died. Uh, my processor started overheating and then I would mess around with it. And eventually, I'm, I'm really glad I figured this out because it was driving me nuts. But I, I isolated the problem down to my uh, liquid cooler. Yeah, the problem was like, uh, I think this is part of the uh, batch that has like a sediment problem. This is like a known thing with lots of the MSI liquid coolers. Yeah, I, I fulfilled the RMA request, so uh, we'll see how that goes. It's been a good cooler up until it started having problems. So uh, hopefully I don't have any negative experiences with the RMA. Uh, the Ryzen 7 5800X is kind of known for running pretty warm. If you look on Reddit, I, I, I undervolted it at one point and I was seeing the results of the people got and uh, heat issues are common. So uh, I needed a cooler and I, I actually ordered one on Amazon. I have it coming in a few days. So I need something temporarily. And I figured it's a good chance to check this out. <laughs> a cheap Chinese air cooler that I bought on AliExpress. I forget how much it was. I think it was like 10 bucks. It's like basically nothing. Uh, I bought it for a build and then I realized it only has a, a three pin fan header, you know, so that I can't control the fan speed. Uh, so I tossed this in my cupboard and it's just sat there for a long time. What better time to try it out than to pair the cheapest, crappiest Chinese air cooler against the, the, the most notorious for having heat problems. Uh, this is probably not a good idea. Uh, I don't even know why I'm making a video about it, but I was doing it anyway, and I figured, hey, why not bring you along for the ride? So, uh, yeah, buckle up. Here we go. I, I, don't, I do not think this is going to go well. If you could feel this, you would realize how light it is. There is there's like nothing to it. it like these little uh, heat dissipating fins. Are, are super thin and flimsy. The only solid heavy part of it is this little bit down here, the contact plate. Yeah, I, I'm not anticipating that this is gonna do very well against my 5800X. And who knows? Hey, maybe it'll surprise us. Hey, you never know. Let's give it the benefit of the doubt, shall we? Oh man, I wish you could feel this. It is so flimsy. Yeah, like if this feels like a pop can, like it's so thin. This is a, a single three pin uh, CPU fan. So a four pin fan, that lets you control the fan speed, which is important because you don't want your processor fan spinning at full speed the whole time because it's just loud. So, you know, you have it ramp up and get faster when the processor, I don't need to explain how that works. Okay. Let's just install this thing and, uh, and see how it goes. And for thermal paste, we're using this Noctua. Actually, hang on. Oh my gosh, look. It comes with its own thermal paste. Should I use this? Well, I mean, we've come this far. I'm, I'm already d doing things that are a terrible idea. Might as well use this uh, soft pack thermal grease that came with this $10 uh, Chinese air cooler. Uh, it has been sitting in my cupboard for like almost a year now. This is, uh, this is gonna go great. Yeah, we are gonna have high hopes here. Oh, so here's my PC right here. I'll go over the specs real quick. Uh, this is an RTX 3080 MSI. The motherboard is an X570 Edge, uh, also MSI motherboard. I have 48 gigabytes of uh, DDDDR4 RAM, uh, clocked at 3600 megatransfers per, per second. I have an 850 watt power supply in there. I got uh, two in-win Sirius Loop uh, 120 millimeter fans in there. And the reason I'm showing you all that is just so you understand 
what kind of components are going to lead to any thermal issues that we have and what kind of airflow. Uh, this is the NZXT H510 case, which is not known for having great airflow. Uh, yeah, so uh, that's what we're dealing with. I, this is so questionable. I almost feel like I should be giving it a disclaimer. Like, do not try this at home. Try it at your own risk. Okay, uh, that's the uh, situation right there. Here's a PC tip for you. Whenever you can't see what you're doing, there's this old clip in a Batman episode. You know, Batman the Animated Series? I used to like that show when I was a kid. Where like, Batman was blind for some reason, like he was being mesmerized by some evil guy. You know, his eyes were playing tricks on him, but he couldn't concentrate. And uh, it was like a fig full of traps. Jump. Batman got through it. He survived it. Stop. And the person he was with said, how did you do that? How did you do that? And Batman said, easy. I closed my eyes. Simple. I just kept my eyes closed. You what? The only way to neutralize the vertigo effect was to rely on my other senses to see us through. And without my eyes to distract me, I could rely on my other senses. So that's my computer tip for you. If you ever find it hard to, uh, you know, like plug in a, a, a weird connection or something, and you know, you're trying to see it and you just can't, just try closing your eyes and you can, you know, kind of feel your way through it. It actually does help. It's not helping me right here, but that's probably because I'm talking to you and I'm distracted. Yeah, there it is. It's a good, everybody's favorite cooler brand, uh, Samba, Samba brand cooler. If that, if that brand name doesn't fill you with confidence, then uh, th that's on you. There's something wrong on your end, I think. Are you ready for the RGB spectacle that is the Samba cooler? Hold on to your hats. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah, it actually looks better on the camera than it does in real life. In real life, it's very gaudy. It actually looks okay on the camera. But uh, yeah, we're in the BIOS. That's a good start. Uh, I think we'll wait just like two or three minutes and uh, we'll see uh, We'll see where it gets. It's at uh, 55 degrees already. Uh, realistically, if I was actually using this cooler on this uh, processor, I'd uh, enable one of uh, uh, the AMD eco modes, you know, to lock it at like a 65 watt uh, power consumption or something. It's just kind of a, a dumb video anyway. So uh, we're not going to do anything practical. We're just going to let it go all out. Oh, should we overclock? Oh, that, uh, even, that's a, a dumb idea, even for me. Uh, it's actually pretty loud. But I like my, I'm very sensitive to the noises my computer's making. I am not comfortable with that noise, not at all. Uh, but my old malfunctioning liquid cooler was uh, crashing in the BIOS when it got into the mid 70s. I could have sworn that the warning came up at uh, 70. Oh, yeah, there it is. <laughs> I knew it was coming. Uh, CPU overheating alert. Please check your CPU cooler is firmly attached for working properly. I'm almost reluctant to uh, start up Windows. Uh, I don't want to damage anything. I could, there actually is a legitimate risk of uh, damaging the <laughs> CPU, I think, <laughs> if uh, we continue this test. But we gotta, right? That's, that's, that's why you're watching the video, so uh, I really hope I don't kill my processor. Well, our processor basically is reaching maximum temperature just by Windows sitting here doing nothing. 91 degrees on the CPU. That is not, uh, not a good temperature for the Ryzen 7 5800X to be idling at. There's kind of a plasticky smell <laughs> coming off this thing. Oh yeah, that fan is really warm. I'm, I'm really, really nervous about continuing this video in its current state. All right, let's get, let's get this uh, Cinebench run over with. If I kill my processor or a component of my computer, please just know I'm doing this for you. I, 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 take pity on me instead of telling me what an idiot I am, like, uh, like everyone normally does. Place your bets in the comments below. Yeah, my usual score is around like uh, 14,000. Like 14,500 if uh, I'm running out the stock settings for my, for this 5800X. So uh, yeah, we'll see how it does. Uh, that's if the computer doesn't crash. Yeah, we're, uh, we're in the red. And uh, yeah, we're throttling right now. Yeah, it's trying its best 
not to let the CPU overheat. That's why it's going down so low. Uh, I, I, my, my, my fears that the computer was going to explode or catch fire are relatively unfounded because it's throttling so low. It's actually keeping it under under control. Hang in there, little guy. The smell of warm plastic is not insubstantial right now. All right, what do we get? Okay, maximum temperature of 91.1 degrees. And uh, we got a score of 9,400. So that's uh, a little more than half the performance that you would expect from this uh, processor it, it, with a, with an adequate cooler. So that's not good. It's terrible, frankly. I think we could all agree on that. Uh, but I, 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 I'm running the Cinebench run again, and uh, it's going way worse this time. <laughs> it's, uh, oh yeah, look at that. We're throttling down to uh, 1900 megahertz. That is super low. Uh, 6,658 points. So that's what, if I usually get 14,500, that's like a difference of something. I don't know, I'll, I'll put it on the screen, but so that's a pretty big uh, performance hit. Uh, should we uh, should we continue the test and uh, maybe try out some gaming? Uh, we're going to be running Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Uh, we're uh, reached, we already reached a uh, CPU temperature of 92 degrees. And, uh, oh, you know, uh, it's actually running okay. Uh, you, you actually can use a cheap, crappy cooler on something like a Ryzen 7 5800X. It's not going to explode, obviously, as I think I've showed. But is it a good idea? Uh, no. No, it's a terrible idea. Pretty much any other cooler would do the job way better than this. Yeah, so it's just hovering at 91 degrees the whole time. You don't want it going above 85 degrees, in my opinion. I think that's uh, that's a little too warm for this chip. Yeah, so I, I, am I going to keep this on? No way. As soon as I've done this video, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna swap it out for this uh, cheap little uh, AMD air cooler. And uh, just judging by the weight alone, the heat dissipating power of this is going to be way, way better than that. Okay, I have one more trick up my sleeve. This has saved me in the past when I'm uh, dealing with overheating issues in Windows. It's not ideal. It's far from ideal. It's, it's terrible when you have to resort to these uh, these measures. But you could actually use the Windows Power Plan to uh, kind of artificially lock the uh, the processor at like a I think like a 50% clock or something. Yeah. So watch this. If you put it on the power saver, it should help a lot. So here we are at uh, what are we at? 77 degrees or so. So let's put it on the power saver and check this out. It's going down. See that? Now we're at 67. Yeah, that, that'll go down substantially. The problem is up here. See, all our cores are going to be locked at 1740 megahertz, which is not ideal. You, you don't buy a 5800X to run at 1700 megahertz. Uh, so, you know, you don't want to have to rely on that. But like, if you're ever in a, a situation where you're like, oh crap, things are overheating and uh, I got finished my work or I, I just got to deal with this for a few days until I get my new cooler or whatever. Yeah, look at that. We're, we're down into the 50s now. So that that's fine, you know? Yeah, for day-to-day -day use, even like, you know, graphics applications and things, this'll, this'll get you by. That'll be fine. Uh, should we fire up the game again and see what a difference this makes to our actual gaming experience? Yeah, so before when we were loading the game, we were at like 91 degrees. Now we're at 62 degrees. Uh, I don't remember what the FPS was before. I'll, I'll put it up on the screen. But now we're at 125 FPS. But it's it's working. So, I mean, can you use a cheap Chinese air cooler on a 5800X? Yeah, sort of. And it'll be throttled like, like crazy. But no, no, you don't want to use a cheap $10 air cooler with your expensive fancy processor. It, it, it deserves better than that. Uh, could you use this on a lower power chip? You know, like the uh, Athlon 3000G? I dare say you probably could, and uh, it would probably be fine, but my computer didn't explode, and I could use it like this, which is more than I was expecting. So I don't know if uh, this video was helpful to anyone or had any useful information at all, but I hope that it was at least entertaining. Uh, please let me know in the comments below. Uh, have you ever dealt with a cheap Chinese air cooler? Uh, do you have any tips for uh, using cheap, crappy, uh, underpowered coolers on fancy high-end uh, processors? Uh, please let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And while you're down there, click the thumbs up button if you liked the video, or the thumbs down button if you didn't. Uh, subscribe!
for more videos not like this better videos than this i assure you most of my videos are way better than this one i don't even know why you watch this one but you did anyway so click that thumbs up button and as always i'm tech dweeb thanks for watching Bye bye Dunkaroos, you're amazing flying duck. I'm King Dunkaroos, you can duck.